What's up guys, it's your boy Knowledge J here, back with another video, and we're talking about Gabriel Prosser, the man who led his slave revolt. So now before we get into the, his slave rebellion, let's just get into some background. Let me give you some background real quick. Now, Gabriel Prosser was born in 1776 in Henrico County and was born into slavery on Thomas Prosser's plantation farm. Now, Gabriel Prosser was a skilled artisan. He was a blacksmith by trade. This blacksmith trade was probably passed down from his father, although it's likely unknown whether that is true. In his youth, he was taught how to read and write. Now, Gabriel was very intelligent. Only someone at Brookfield taught him the literary skill that only 5% of his contemporaries had. He was also very tall with his height being 6'2 or 6'3 and was strong from his smithing. Gabriel was able to hire himself for his work and that allowed that his owner got a percentage of his wages and that left Gabriel some coins in his pocket which he made him self-sufficient. His contemporaries described him and I quote as a fellow of courage and intellect above his rank in life end quote. Now his contemporaries said this when he was about 24 years old. Now let's get to the slave revolt. He had help from others such as Jack Bowler and George Smith. Gabriel created a plan to gain control over Richmond, Virginia by eliminating all the whites there. The Methodists, Quakers, and Frenchmen. After he would run a kingdom as a leader and monarch, Gabriel Prosser was most likely influenced by the American or even more likely the Haitian Revolution. He recruited a lot of people into his military. There are thousands on thousands of people who are armed with tools like pipes and swords that were made from the farm tools by the slave blacksmiths. Now the revolt was supposed to be on the day on August 30, 1800. It always seems like there's something with August with black people, but supposed to start on the day August 30th, 1800, but two Sambos messed up the plan. They wanted to protect Master and reported them to the authorities. The governor at the time, James Monroe, brought out the militia, but then a rainstorm delayed them a day, and they could not set up a defense against the militia because of this. They eventually fled to the countryside. The militia was in the countryside and searching for rebels. Gabriel and Jack were able to disappear. Others were too, but by September 9th, over 30 leaders were captured in a weighted trial in the court of Oyer and Term Terminer, a court where only slaves were tried without the benefit of a jury. The trials of these people began on September 11th. Gabriel and Ditcher were still not found, and the whites were very afraid of how close the angel was to their doorstep. Now, the white supremacists offered to give a pardon to a couple of the enslaved blacks who were willing who were willing to rat out the other conspirators. The court got two witnesses to the stand, Ben, one of Prosser's slaves, and, bon, and Ben Woolfolk. So Prosser's slave, Ben, came first, and his testimony set a whole bunch of other enslaved people to the gallows, which included Gabriel Prosser's brothers, Solomon and Martin. Since Proster's slave band wasn't in contact with the slaves in the outlying areas, they depended on Ben Woolfolk to do that. Others also gave testimonies. On, on September 14, Gabe, Gabriel swam to a ship called Mary on the Jane River. He met the captain by the name of Richardson Taylor. There were two black men who were on the ship, one of which was Taylor's former slave, Isham, and another black man named Billy. They identified Gabriel, the leader of the plot. Richardson Taylor used to be an overseer, but he changed his mind about slavery. He tried to take Gabriel to freedom, but when the ship docked in Norfolk, Billy alerted the authorities of Gabriel. Gabriel and Taylor were detained. 
Billy was rewarded, but he didn't get the $300 reward they expected, but he only got $50. A big motivating factor was for him to buy his freedom, but he couldn't do that now. Later on October 6, several witnesses came forward, but Gabriel Prosser didn't make a statement defending himself. He was sentenced to be executed the next day, but he wanted it to be carried out on the 10th with the others the other slaves who were supposed to be hung on that day and the court agreed but on the 10th they hung them in different locations and Gabriel was hung alone in the town gallows now in conclusion after the two months of the trials 26 black people were executed by hanging and one more died from a, from a hanging while in custody some were found guilty and some were pardoned some were even transported to different states the lost slave masters were reimbursed by the state for the lost property of the slaves they owed. They owned, and Virginia paid over 8,900 to them for the ex for the executed slaves. They were black people that were captured that escaped in Hanover County. Two slaves escaped from a prison and were never captured again. In Norfolk and Petersburg, magistrates questioned whites and blacks to gain evidence, but to no avail. Nah, that's all I got for you guys. But the reason why I'm dropping this video, even though this slave revolt was a failed revolt, it's a show that our ancestors fought back, you know. A lot of times in the media and other, and other sources, they want to act like we didn't fight back against slavery or white supremacy, but this is a show we fought back against it. Some, yeah, sometimes we failed, but sometimes we were successful. So that's all I got for you guys today. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'm out.